Welcome to the Amazon Web Services Cloud. Lift up your business. Start now. My name is Detlef Kors, and I'm, I'm, uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce our next guest to you. Uh, he's a retailer, I think, from, from the beginning, may I say it like that. He has worked for Escada, and he has worked for, uh, for Kaufhof, and uh, he is Mr. Amazon Germany. A warm welcome to Ralf Kleber. <laughs> Ralf. Thank you. Ralph, first question, Amazon, Amazon, the Amazon story and the Amazon uh, AWS story. Uh, how does it come together? Well, it, it came together this morning uh, when I pulled out my, my Blackberry <laughs> and, uh, and used to my taxi app. That was the first time it came together this morning. So, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And actually, I'm going to talk a little about uh, and remind you or recall that some of you might not know that Amazon is not only a web service company. We're also doing other stuff like uh, selling cat food and shoes. And, uh, uh, and I'm here to give you more the, sure the real context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might forget here because uh, I'm, I think I'm the only non-technical person. You could hear that by saying I have a Blackberry. Um, so uh, thank you that you found your way up here. Uh, I hope we're going to spend an interesting 30 minutes together. Uh, and if you want and we have time, you can also ask questions in the end. So this is about Amazon. So the first question must be, who in the room loves reading? Raise your arm if you love reading. Everybody loves reading. So let me give you a, 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 a safety tip. We call this a safety tip. When you love reading, the thing that you shouldn't read usually is shareholder letters, letters to shareholders, right? They're utterly boring. It's pages of pages of explanation why weather, foreign exchange rate changes, political climate ruined what would have been a sensational business year, right? With Amazon, it's slightly different. I would highly recommend you to read Jeff's letter to shareholders. The one in the back is the shareholder letter from 1997, very early on, where Jeff pretty much explained what is the strategy and the vision and, and, and why Amazon and what, what, what is our roadmap, what is long-term thinking, why is this important, what kind of culture are we hoping to build. And uh, it's, a, it's four pages, it's a quick read, you can find it on Amazon.ir. And why do I say that? Because last week he released his uh, letter to the shareholder from uh, this year and he talks a lot about web services and why web services and Amazon is something that makes complete sense, right? Uh, and I hope that uh, at the end of my short uh, 25, 30 minutes, I helped a little bit understand why we believe that web services and Amazon make sense. So in our history, um, this is one of the most often things um, people ask us, uh, what are you? Are you a tech company? Are you a retailer? Uh, today they also ask, are you a photo studio? Are you a publisher? And, and funny enough uh, and easy enough, uh, the answer to this question always is yes, yes, yes. That's, that's, that's what we are exactly. Um, and uh, and uh, not everybody understands why this is a good thing, so I hope I can do something to help with that. It all started with Jeff's vision to make the internet usable for customer. And uh, that was 1995. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he's not a retailer, right? He's a tech guy. Uh, he studied electronics and computer science. He was really fascinated by that thing called internet that came up and all of a sudden millions of people start using it. And he thought like, oh, wow, this, this, this is becoming really big. And I try to do something to make this thing that becomes more popular and really big useful. And so his vision, and this is also written in the 97 uh, shareholder, was 
to build infrastructure that makes the internet usable for customers. And the first infrastructure, he was thinking of, man, you've got to sell something to these millions of people, right? And so he had this vision to create a store that, unlike my stores at Kaufhof and Escada, uh, who follow a very strict concept, they have four walls and a ceiling, and then they hire smart people who have to figure out what to sell in these four walls and this ceiling. The internet did not have these walls and ceilings. So the vision was to create Earth's largest selection, uh, the place where customer can find everything. Everything, we're still not finished, right? So that's what mainly my teams do in consumer retail marketplace. Um, but uh, today, or the last time I checked, Amazon has 480 million items sellable, buyable in our store. So we built a store with 400 million uh, eight, uh, items that customer can choose and buy from, and we're building the service around it. Pretty fascinating if you think about my Kaufhof had like 40,000 items in it, uh, and now I'm managing the German store has about 180 million, 200 million buyable ASIN. So that was, that was the vision. And this was the website that enabled that vision. And yes, laugh, everybody laughs when they see that website because the Amazon logo, you can see the Amazon in the logo, right? Uh, it was more like a hand-drawn. And anybody remember how the company should be named? Anybody heard the name? The original name should have been Kadabra. Like Abra, Kadabra, yeah, like the magician thing uh, that you can do. And thank God the phone connections were so bad at the time that the registered agent understood Kadaver. And, uh, and Jeff thought Kadaver is not a good name for a company, so we got to change the name. And he looked around and uh, uh, pretty much in a dictionary. And uh, uh, his wife Mackenzie found under A a word that is similar in all languages, Amazonas, and so it became Amazon. So as funny as this website looked, it was really disruptive. And I just copied you one comment from the bad press not to make a comment about Slate. But that was their reaction. They said, God damn, nobody needs that, right? And Jeff was trying to talk about, uh, on the website, one million titles, constantly low prices, customer reviews, right? These are elements that are still core of our shopping experience on Amazon. So they were there in 95 the first time. So very, very disruptive. Um, uh, nobody thought this is ever going to do something. When I joined, I joined in, uh, in 99. The German company was uh, re, uh, relaunched in uh, uh, October 98. I joined June 99. Um, Baron just, just released an article, the one to the left, and called us Amazon.bomb. This thing is about to explode, right? Uh, the article talks about how companies like Sony and Dell will eat us alive. Uh, and honestly, I was scared. I thought this might happen uh, in 99, and thank God we're still alive. 2005, when Jeff was uh, presenting the first Kindle, his mother hates this picture. Actually, PR told me to not use this picture anymore because his mother hates that picture so badly. Um, Jeff was trying to explain the tech community why we built a device that literally can do nothing, right? And he was trying that for two hours, like Steve Jobs in front of tech journalists telling them, look, this is the Kindle. Uh, and you know tech journalists? Tech journalists would ask, OK, what's the CPU? How can I serve? Is it what kind of colors? What's the megapixel camera? Uh, what kind of music? How much music can I store on it? And Jeff was, uh, you can't take pictures with that thing. You can't store music on it. It's, it's trying to be a book. It pretty much can't do anything, right? It's black and white. It turns pages. And it stores books. And everybody was like, oh, wow, this is not going to go anywhere, right? Uh, and Jeff said, no, no, we're pretty convinced it's important because we believe that it, this thing must behave via book. Because reading a book is a habit that is like 500 years old, right? And a book is a pretty dead thing, right? You never take pictures with your book. You never listen to music with your book. I don't, right? Or not successfully. So, and that's, that's what we were trying to build. But going to, a, to, a, uh, to a, a technology company, ask them to build something that can do nothing doesn't work, so we have to build it our own. It's like going to BMW and ask them, or oh, Porsche, can you build us a car that only drives 10 kilometers fast? They go like, go away. So the thing that was interesting was now shopping became normal, right? People are sitting in front of their smartphones, in front of their PCs. They're pressing a button. They're shopping in a virtual range of product. They're pressing a button, and they're not surprised 
uh, when six hours later the door rings, the doorbell rings, and somebody hands them a pair of shoe or a package of dog food or a book or music or whatever, right? It became normal. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a pretty magic thing when things became normal. Um, it became so normal that um, it became our most important pillar, right? These are the three business pillars of Amazon. To the left, it's uh, what we call retail and marketplace consumer business. It's about buying and selling goods uh, to our customers. Uh, Amazon has uh, uh, around about a little more than 300 million customers worldwide. Uh, worldwide. Uh, the second part is our digital uh, investment that's about content and devices. It's music, it's books, it's, it's gaming. Uh, you may have heard about Twitch or other stuff. So all that falls into the, the the digital area. And the third column is the one that you can experience here the most. It's uh, what I call computing and storage. It's simplified. <laughs> I know uh, it's much more than that, uh, but it's pretty much web services. So. Amazon is trying to build infrastructure in these three areas right now, right? And I will talk a little bit uh, about um, uh, uh, the, uh, the infrastructure itself. But before I talk about uh, the infrastructure, I think it's very important to know uh, what, what, you, what is the basic of this infrastructure. And the basic of this infrastructure is to have the right culture. Uh, what we believe. You need to have a culture of innovation, and uh, that comes with a, uh, with a lot of, of important elements that are important to us. So today, the most bespoke or written uh, innovations of Amazon are uh, to the left. They, uh, the Germ Anybody from Germany? Uh, in Germany, they have this wonderful word, Drohnen, right? The drones, because it sounds really scary. And journalists were painting this picture that uh, somebody will drop a washing machine on your cat, uh, a drone will, uh, wrong delivery temp, it's thousands of drones flying around Berlin. Um, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a serious experiment, right? We're trying to find out today our fastest delivery option in, in many cities is two hours, one hour, two hour delivery. Uh, here, Berlin, for example, is, uh, is, a, is a six hour area, so you can order until noon, you get it delivered starting 6 p.m. in the evening. And we're trying to figure out how can you go faster, right? What, what, what do you got to do to be faster than one or two hour? And that's where the drones kick in, right? And you shouldn't think about this becoming the most common use case, but there is use cases. Think about a mechanic sitting in front of a washing machine needing a spare part. Think about somebody who needs a medical treatment, uh, not want to wait longer than 30 minutes to get it, right? And of course, uh, you shouldn't start with the easiest thing if you're an innovator. If you're an innovator, you start with the hardest thing. So drones, is the long, it's, it's a lot of air regulation, it's long process. Uh, today, we're only allowed to fly in the US and the UK. Germany has not yet signed off, so there's a lot of regulation going on. We could have gone uh, a much easier way to introduce a concept of non-human delivery, right? We could have introduced, I don't know, a, a delivery kangaroo, right? Ever so, oh, sweet, the Amazon kangaroo, dot, dot, here it comes, right? I want one of these. So that would be less controversial. but. Uh, the drones is one of the longest, hardest regulated things. The thing on the right, by the way, is called uh, the robots, right? And the German press was uh, writing that Germany is, uh, all the workforce is gonna automate, it's all robots. It's, uh, Amazon replaces workforce with robots. The usual picture, right? Uh, that you have in mind when you present something, when you confront people with something new. So these robots uh, is actually uh, a product of Amazon Robotics. It's a, a company in Boston. Uh, uh, formerly known as Kiva, uh, and uh, um, if you're running a, um, a storage room, uh, then you will find out that your storage room consists of 30% shelving, 30% production floor where you do the packaging and the manipulation, and 30% aisles, right? Uh, and that's really unproductive. You need the aisles for human beings to run along and pick the things and drop the things into shelves. But the aisles are eating 30% of your capacity in a fulfillment center. So if you think about a 100,000 square meter fulfillment center at Amazon and a way to gain 30% more productivity, get rid of the aisles, right? And this is what robots do. So they put the shelves together, and you can watch this. It's really nice. It looks like dancing walls. So they move the shelves together, and then whenever an item gets ordered, they remove the shelves. They know what's selling fast, what's selling slow, and then they drive around the shelves to somebody who then takes out the product. It's a really cool system. I really love it. 
But what I wanted to say is, when you put out these new things, right, you shouldn't expect that everybody in the first minute understands why you're doing that and what this is good for. You will always meet people that say, ah, nobody needs that, or this is never going to uh, work. So um, we put some of these things together so our employee and our workforce and our uh, partners understand how we're thinking about these things. We think anything that is easy, uh, can't be really uh, something that we're aiming for, right? If you love innovation, then you need to love experimentation. And anything that you know the result in the beginning, from the beginning, is not experimentation. If you love experimentation, then you need to be ready to fail. And uh, Jeff, in the new shareholder letter, he actually writes that he believes that Amazon is the best place to fail, right? And that's really important. Because in many of the, of the cultures, corporate cultures, you learn how to hide failure rather than celebrate it in front of, of everybody. I must admit, not every celebration feels like a celebration. Some feel you're just being ripped apart. But in the end, it's about sharing the learnings, sharing the pain. And that's, that's what you need to be uh, uh, ready. You need to be long-term thinking. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to run out of the... Uh, uh, and invent something completely new. So you need to also be uh, able to afford long-term uh, thinking, right? That's a financial uh, uh, thinking dimension behind that whole behavior. And, uh, and lastly, you need to have a, a very solid anchor, what, you, what you're aiming for, and that anchor for us is the customer in all of our business areas. So uh, we call it, we start everything working f uh, with the customer backwards. And it's, it's truly working backwards, right? So the first thing you got to do at Amazon, which is not a, a secret, is uh, when you have an idea, you need to write a press release. You get one page of paper to tell everybody what's so exciting about this idea, which is usually the press release, right? You put it out in public in front of the people, and you need to be able, in like a very short paragraph, tell people why this is exciting. So we write press releases, right? Munich, September 15. I think we should deliver in one hour, and customer is exciting. Stuff like that. So we work backwards from the customer. What's so the, a brilliant idea from the customers? And many of these things that we work backwards, uh, I just put some on here, right? I mean. Um, for example, uh, I mentioned customer reviews, which was a, a revolution, right? I, I, I recall when, when, I, when my teams introduced consumer electronics into the German market, it took three hours, uh, in, including the customer reviews, until I got a call from a, from a manufacturer who said, what the heck is going on? Your customers are writing that my product is not the best product, right? And so it, some wrote it's actually the worst, right? And you should buy something else. It was empowering people that buy vacuum cleaners to tell about their vacuuming experience and don't laugh. You can go to the website. I just checked this morning. I have a favorite A's and it's a Siemens vacuum cleaner, 90 euros, which has 1,800 customer reviews. And we all would ask ourselves, what are 1,800 people writing about a vacuum cleaner for 90 euros? Well, they're writing a lot. Read it. It's really interesting, right? It's like I, it, I vacuumed the cat or the, I couldn't remove the cat hair from the sofa or the cable is not long enough, I need to lie on the floor. There's like thousands of things that you can tell after you purchase the thing why you think it's the best or the worst. And that's what customers are doing. And that's what became a real habit. And uh, we're enjoying that habit. Or uh, free shipping, kostenlose Lieferung for those who can't read German. Free shipping, right? Free shipping is, uh, was one of the very important innovations for, for customers. You, you think it's pretty simple, but up until free shipping, customers literally had to do math on our website. We asked them, like, all right, you buy this vacuum cleaner for 76 euros and 99 cents, and you, we charge you 4 euros uh, 86 uh, shipping. Is you don't care, right? You say, hey, Amazon, tell me, what are you going to take from my bank account or my credit card? I don't care what you call it, right? Call it shipping, call it packaging, call it uh, Aunt Annie's extra fee. I don't care. I just want to know what you deduct from my bank account. So uh, free shipping was brought one thing. Uh, we call this a peace of mind functionality, right? You stop thinking about something, you stop doing math exercises on a website, so you're reducing the heavy burden uh, of shopping and making it more lightweight. You make it easier, and easiness
fairness and convenience are the two most relevant things that we've been working on. Uh, and if you're shopping on our website, I could point you to several of these functions. One click, obviously, you don't want to wait for the cashier always entering your payment information. You store it once, and then we get you out of the store in 60 seconds. Less than 60 seconds is actually the goal which is very different, by the way, from a physical retailer. They try to keep you in the store as long as they can. We try to get you out of the store as fast as we can. We call this unstore thinking. So we take the things that do not work for us in, in physical stores, reverse them, and make them work online. It's pretty cool. So um, all these easiness and convenience uh, things that we, that we found, we start bundling them. Uh, we start bundling them in a program to make them easier accessible for customers. We started off with unlimited free, shipp free shipping. All you can eat next day free shipping uh, was, the, was the message here in Germany. So every order for our Prime members uh, on the German website gets delivered on the next day guaranteed and it's free of charge. It's awesome. It makes you stop thinking, when does that thing come? which is one of the most relevant questions that a customer asks when he orders that item. When will I have it? And I can tell you none of the customer, or not many use cases, order a thing to wait, right? They have a party on Friday, they have a barbecue next week, they have a, a, a kid's football game tomorrow, so you want to know when are the shoes coming, when is the barbecue coming, when is my dress coming? Uh, so that's a very, very important question. So free shipping was one element. Uh, we, over time, then added a uh, lending library, uh, because we know many of our uh, uh, customers love reading, so you can uh, rent uh, out of 800,000 books, uh, as many and as long as you like. Uh, we added uh, uh, free instant video streaming, right? So you can stream from uh, over 18,000 movies and, and TV series, including our exclusive stuff like Mr. Robot or Man in the High Castle. And last year, we added over a million music titles that you can... Uh, um, that you can why? because we want to make it easier to do things that our customers love to do. They love watching movies, they love reading books, they love listening to music, they love shopping online. So we make it easier and easier. Infrastructure itself uh, has to become easier and easier because uh, what, what we observe over the last year is that there's a huge transition going on and our infrastructure is part and, and serving uh, this uh, transition, transformation. Um, because you can, you can easily see that people who love to buy things are now, to a large extent, also people that love to sell things. They became so familiar with the internet that they start not only buying on the internet, but they start their own little sales business, right? selling a used thing on Amazon or eBay, uh, selling a new thing, uh, uh, creating your own product and start selling it in, in digital and physical format. It doesn't really matter. People that loved reading books are now authors, right? They're writing 140 uh, uh, um, um, letters at, at Twitter. They are author, right? Uh, a customer review at Amazon. So people more and more become authors and looking for infrastructure that helps them to publish whatever they write to as many people as possible, because that's what you want to do when you're an author. People that were consumers start producing stuff. People that were loving games uh, all of a sudden start uh, the capability programming apps and inventing their own new games, making money with them. Maybe, maybe some of you did that already. People who loved watching films are now really making films. Look at YouTube, you have millions of films. One of the most successful uh, 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 publishing platforms uh, for video content. So there's this whole transformation going on, and that whole transformation needs infrastructure. And I give you a few examples out of our infrastructure. So Marketplace, having, creating the ability that somebody can reach our 300 million customer with as simple as a few clicks uh, with their product enables buyers to become sellers, right? This couple on the left-hand side, uh, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Hallinger from Landsberg am Lech. It's a little, small, cute town, a little south of Munich. Um, they're actually consultants, or they were consultants. They love chocolate. Uh, they started their old chocolate manufacturing and had a little store in Landsberg, right? And they make really great product. Honestly, 
don't start with it, you're going to get addicted. It's, it's really, I, I stopped visiting them uh, because you can, you can see I shouldn't do that anymore. So they became really, really good and they're selling across Europe now their chocolate product on, on the Amazon platform, right? Because it's trivially easy to export from the Amazon platform into all other countries where we host websites. The German sellers alone last year realized 1.8 billion euro business outside Germany on top of their business in Germany. So German sellers, uh, so sellers selling on Amazon.de uh, also made 1.8 billion revenue outside Germany just with that function. It's just amazing. And you can see the Spanish guy uh, who loves designing product and obviously is a very successful uh, seller on Amazon. So. Um, we're building infrastructure in, in many ways, not only on the website and through payments. We also offer our logistic uh, infrastructure because not everybody loves to handle trucks, not everybody loves to handle storage. We're experts in storing product and uh, um, receiving packaging and shipping it. Uh, we're also the ones that have probably the most diverse shipping options with partners like DHL, Hermes, or UPS, so we use every carrier uh, worldwide, including our own carrier system. Um, so we give our partners access to that by uh, choosing logistic services, uh, our infrastructure, if you want so, uh, as their infrastructure. So all they do is ship their product to our fulfillment centers, and then uh, uh, we do all the packaging and, uh, and the picking and the handling. The product automatically uh, applies for this six-hour service, right? Uh, for this two-hour service, something that the seller probably, w it would take them a long time to get up to that standard. I, I talked about authors, uh, um, and, and whenever I talk about authors, I love to mention Poppy J. Anderson. Uh, uh, it's actually, I, uh, you, can, you can Google her real name. Uh, she's from North Rhine-Westphalia. Uh, she studied history, uh, and she started uh, writing uh, love books, right? Uh, it's something with uh, quarterbacks and football. I don't know. I've never been into that. So don't ask me about details. And uh, Poppy Che not only became the most successful author on the Amazon self-publishing platform, so she wrote that book. She didn't find a publisher, the usual story, right? Because publisher cannot publish every book. Uh, so that's why we built that self-publishing environment, uh, because we don't ask whether this book is good or bad, you just publish it. So if any of you have a book and you don't know how to publish it, use Kindle self-publishing. Uh, you can then uh, decide to translate it without using our program Crossing. So if you publish it in German, but you also want it to be out there in English, um, then uh, uh, we would translate the book for you and then publish it in English. Um, uh, obviously, this is a machine task, right? Uh, something, a technology task where we're really good at, uh, where, where things uh, come together. So the vision for us in digital publishing was not like have a Kindle in September and then a new version in March and then we build another device in, in February next year. The vision uh, we had on, on the wall was every book in every language in every country in 60 seconds. That's our vision. Uh, for Amazon Books and Publishing, and I think that's a pretty cool vision, because if you if you talk to authors, right, all they want to do is have people give people the possibility to read their book. Nobody writes a book so it doesn't get read, right? So if you wish that everybody, if you if you uh, an, an, an Indian author, right, and uh, you're writing a book and you want every German to read it. But you don't find a way how to get to Germany, right? It starts with who's going to translate it. The publisher will ask you how, you, how, how many will you sell? And you say, I don't know. The publisher says, well, then maybe I don't know I should do that, right? So um, that business only works if you have an automated, scaling, self-publishing functionality. And you can see with Poppy J. Anderson's example um, that uh, you can sell millions. So she, she sold millions of books. So we have, uh, um, I think, two handful of German authors uh, since the existence of the self-publishing programs, pretty much two years old, uh, a two handful of authors that sold already sold millions of books. Uh, it's amazing. And became a professional author. Today, by the way, uh, she is self-publishing and she's also using a publisher. Obviously, publisher then get attracted. And uh, a publisher can do a lot of good things to books. Um, so uh, she now has both systems because obviously exclusivity is nothing. Uh, that we would aim for. And it's, it's the same thing with web services, right? Over the years, we just became expert in handling 
uh, this, uh, this infrastructure that you need to store and process data. Uh, I think you asked me how, how that was in 99. Yeah, in 99, we were sitting there like any other company uh, and were making investment decisions. Can we afford another HP Superdome? Uh, and, and will that be enough uh, to, um, to handle the customer demand uh, at peak in, in the Christmas time, which is probably the hardest. That was one of the critical questions. The second critical question uh, that I was constantly involved, will we be able to handle the temperature? Because these things, when uh, demand kicked in, uh, uh, they start, temperatures start going up by two, three, four degrees in our, in our data centers, and we had a hard time cooling it down. And that's why oftentimes you would see a dog appear on our website and it says, gone fishing. Uh, that's when the websites crashed, right? So we were, we, we, we were, we crashed so many times uh, that we learned how to not crash anymore. And thank God it hasn't happened uh, since, a, since a long time. But um, obviously, um, uh, over time, you, you learn to manage and to scale um, uh, this infrastructure. And, and you all know that scale is the most important factor uh, growing that infrastructure, because only when you're big, you're getting the large cost advantages. Only when you're big, you're attracting the people that are capable managing uh, this complex infrastructure, that are capable securing that complex infrastructure. And at the end of the day, if you ask the majority of the companies, and probably that's a question that you guys are asking yourself, is do you want to do your business or do you want to manage a data network? Uh, BMW would tell me, we want to build cars, right? Uh, I don't want to build an IT. Uh, uh, infrastructure uh, to not, not well they want to they want to do design and they want to have the, the knowledge for the applications but they don't care um, uh, uh, as much where the data is living uh, and uh, where it is stored and how it gets processed uh, like they not care for the water uh, that they use to to uh, produce their paint or whatever you use water for you ideally you just don't want to ask where is uh, where is my data coming from uh, it, it should be so safe that you can do that. And you can see that um, uh, this is just a, a traffic chart. It shows the, the, uh, uh, the scalability and the variability in the number of hits on the Amazon website. So we, we became an expert ourselves for these ups and downs, ups and downs, because we constantly have them. And in Germany, uh, what does this mean? Uh, in, in November, at time frame November, we pretty much have like 35 million people in our store, in and out, in and out, doing transactions here and there. Uh, and, uh, and that's different over, over the course of the day. But you can, never, you, 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 you can never accurately predict when it is going to happen. Uh, uh, I know that uh, one of the anecdotes is uh, during uh, World Football Championships, right? I used to get this email, website down, website down, said no, football game, football game, right? Uh, because everybody shut down their computers and was watching footballs, right? And then uh, uh, a phenomena four years later for the next championship, I think it was 2004, you could see a peak at halftime, right? People watched the game, then they came at halftime, and they didn't go pee, but they came to shop, and then they go watch the game again, right? So that saved us the emails, website down, website down, and the answer, football game, football game. <laughs> it's really funny. So, and uh, I'm, I was talking about my taxi, right? My, my taxi is actually the perfect use case for this up and down, up and down. Think about the demand for taxis in the morning uh, when everybody arrives at the airport or uh, in New Year's Eve, right? When everybody wants to get home and all of a sudden needs to use a taxi, right? If you had to, to uh, host and, and build and, and, and manage the, uh, the capacity for that peak the, for the whole year, that would be very, very, very inefficient. I don't need to tell you. But it's not only the startups. Uh, I think there's many use cases out there. It's also the, the big big guys that learn how to use um, uh, and, and leverage uh, the infrastructure. Uh, uh, we build CareShare is just one example. There's plenty of those. I think I shouldn't go deep uh, in that. So I hope um, that our infrastructure is, will help you 
uh, to be innovators, right, uh, will help you to create just like Alan Kay. I don't know if you know Alan Kay. He was the guy, uh, he, he, developed a, uh, he developed the Duna book, 1968. Uh, it's the thing that you would call uh, a tablet today. So uh, um, it was a little early to present that in 1968, but it's a really fascinating story. If you haven't, have not heard of him, I would recommend reading about his story. And he had this smart sentence. He says, you know, I know nothing about the future and it's so hard to predict. So the, the much easier way to predict the future is just create the future. And I think, I hope you're all here to create the future and I hope we can be part of that creation process. Thank you very much. <laughs> by, by the way, this is not Alan Kay. Uh, this is uh, my, my PR, my fancy PR guy put this picture in there. I don't know where this guy is going, so I need to find out. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little bit dangerous. <laughs> no, 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 no. I encouraging. <laughs> encouraging just to start. So, Ralph, thanks for that wonderful, impressive uh, speech. So, so, I learned a lot. I love Amazon for myself. I use Kindle. I you try. To. I try to <laughs> learn a lot about self-publishing. And what I learned yeah. is uh, the, the mission is just to to enable people to do what they want. This is what I, I found very, very impressive, and I think it's a marvelous story. So, if you have any questions now to to Ralph, please please use this chance to. To talk to Mr. Amazon Germany, and uh, <laughs> no, yeah, really. So this is not only a story about technology, not about computing. Uh, it's a story about how to use a, the digital transformation in your own life. And I think uh, you have thousands of stories in your own mind, in your own business. So what is yours? Just pl please join us in our discussion. And is there any question in there in the moment? No question. Everybody is impressed. So Amazon is asking. <laughs> Go ahead. So, right. <laughs> Thank Hello. you very much for that uh, presentation. That was, that was great. And uh, I think it became clear in your presentation that it's a typical Amazon scheme that uh, in the moment where, where Amazon has developed a certain capability for, for themselves, and it became very good at that, it opened it up to other people or to other companies to let them benefit from that, which is unusual but obviously very successful. So how came that this has not been this behavior has not been copied anywhere else. Ah, oh. it's it's really I mean it's a right observation. By the way, it was not our the first way how we approached it. A uh, marketplace was the first time when we opened a website uh, after failing, having several attempts failing how to attach with other sellers. Right, so we we launched a, a dynamic business called Auctions. Because everybody said, hey, this is a really cool business. There was a company that was really successful also here in Berlin uh, and is still really successful with this business. And um, uh, so we went to do that and we built like what was a mall concept. It was called Z Shops or Z Shops, as you like, failed with that. And uh, the first attempt, um, uh, the ne necessity, the understanding that this is necessary when you want to sell everything. Right? And you do the mathematical exercise, how much storage capacity you will need to store everything, you pretty much end up with a very scary number of fulfillment centers. And they are not pretty, right? They're very square and they block a lot of land and there's trucks moving in and out and you can imagine that you probably become the most unpopular company of planet Earth if you blast our Earth with 1,000 fulfillment center. So the, the thinking was a lot, how can we acquire storage space without building it, right? And that's what, what you pretty much do by acquiring a seller because he has a storage space somewhere, right? The, even the private person who sells his three CDs, you're adding two centimeters of storage for these uh, three CDs. I can't tell you why this is uh, not copied, right? I think it, 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 it may be copied. We not spend a lot of time of finding out why or why not things are happening. We're so, we're so focused on, uh, on our own experiments, right, and, and failure. And now it, it, it really became the DNA. Look at Echo. I mean, Echo, uh, a lot of people would tell you that this is, is, is a very critical revolutionary piece of the future being able to do things with your voice instead of your hands, right? 
I'm looking at the young people here. I'm a pretty old person, right? I'm used when I wanted to do a grilled chicken. I became an electrician first because I read the manual of the oven and temperature and time and put it in here and push this button and then it's going to beep and plink. And then uh, I became a cook at the same time and would tell me salt in here, pa parcel, whatever, right? And then I would grill the chicken. I, I, I think the future is going to be oven, grilled chicken, crispy. That's it. Right? And the oven will know what to do. He will know how heavy the, the chicken is. He will know how long to grill it and at which temperature and program. And this is a piece of infrastructure that we open up right out the gate. Right? You can sign up out there and do your own experiments, uh, experiments uh, uh, with Alexa, uh, the infrastructure behind uh, uh, the device Echo. Uh, and it's now became our DNA. I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a process, and I could imagine that other companies will do the same thing, but I'm, I'm probably not the first person to find out who. <laughs> You're going to tell me. So maybe we could ask another question. Uh, everybody, uh, anybody of you uses Siri on iPhone? Who is going to use Siri from time to time? You? Of course. Did you ever ask what the sense of life? <laughs> you know that? You know the story? Uh, you know, the series, I'm not testing it now because no technology, so I don't. Siri normally is telling you, I can't answer this question. But uh, Alexa is telling you the answer to this question is, you know, uh, 42. Great. Why? <laughs> uh, because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic book that everybody should read. Douglas Adams' uh, Hitchhiker Travel Through Galaxy, of course. Great. Isn't, isn't that a great story? <laughs> I love the story. And there's a wonderful spot but, uh, we will see this evening, with the Alexa spot. And, and do we, but we it's, have it's, it's interesting, right? When you think about designing a persona for uh, something that lives in the virtual experience, but you honestly, you need to spend time asking yourself, what is the answer, right? Do you want to be funny? Do you want to be uh, strict? Do you want to be, right? Do you, do you sound like my mother, right? Like, don't ask! I'm like, okay, mother, I'm not asking, right? Or you're like, my, like my teacher, I'm going to lecture you on the trees of life, right? And, and there's a lot of thinking process because it, will, it creates, the, the answer will create the persona that the customer will have in mind and be able to connect or not connect with the system. And that's something that, uh, that's actually a very interesting process. It's, I love it's that. It's not only interesting, it's, it's incredible. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. I could so. talk hours about so, creating that persona. So I think <laughs> this afternoon, some, some of you can, can win some Alexa. And we have a, a raffle, we have a raffle, yes. Echoes, I believe. Echoes, yes. The device. Yeah, the, the device, device is called Echo, the, the infrastructure is called Alexa. Yes, yes. And, uh, if you have the chance, just participate and use your app. So I think you can can treasure hunt. Yes, treasure hunt. Uh, the Alexa treasure hunt, and then tonight we'll we'll present I, the winner. Use a warning: if you had kids at home, be careful. They they not stop interacting with that thing, right? And yeah. the, the the cool thing is, you walk into your room, you say, Alexa, play with David Bowie, and Alexa is going to play David Bowie, right? It's going to go to your cloud, pick pip songs. You can also say, play China Girl from Danny Bowie. Then it's more specific. Or uh, Alexa, order me a pizza is another dangerous thing if you have kids at home, right? Uh, more favorable thing is uh, Alexa, call me a taxi. That's very very useful, right? If you you don't even have to pull the hands out and use the my taxi. We just go, Alexa, call me a taxi. <laughs> okay, so you have uh, some bright, new, brilliant ideas for your life in future for tomorrow. So even if you start, I used my taxi app uh, last night. So I went on. Uh, I left the partner event, and uh, I used taxi. Dot .te and uh, I tried to get some taxi and it didn't work. So some, some guy came out and said, "Just why don't you use my taxi?" Uh, I it downloaded works. the app, I logged in, I had the taxi in, in three minutes, and I learned that my taxi driver is Murat, and his name, I, I forgot, but his name was in the app, and I could call him up at once. So I th think this is... Really uh, cool. Really cool, a, a totally <laughs> new life. And, uh, you, Thank you, you We my never taxi. thought about that a few years ago. <laughs> Imagine what is happening today, and you're part of the digital t transformation, and I love it. Have a good time. Thanks, Ralph, for Thank the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you.